Okay, Ian, so it's uh, great to meet you. And um, you wrote The Master and His Emissary over a 20 year period. And it's been out for around 10 years now. It's become a bit of a classic. Can you tell us who the emissary is and who the um, master is? Yes, before I do that, I'll just explain the story behind the image of the master and his emissary, which was a hint I found in Nietzsche um, about a wise spiritual master who looked after a community so well that it flourished, and as it flourished and grew, he realised he couldn't look after all the business of the community himself. But he realised something more important, which was that not only could he not, but he should not get involved with certain things if he was to preserve his important overview. And so he delegated his brightest and best servant to go about and do some administrative work on his behalf. This servant was certainly bright, but not bright enough to know what it was he didn't know. And he thought he knew everything, and that the master probably knew very little. So he started presenting himself as the master and taking on a role he wasn't suited for. And as a result, the community collapsed and the master was betrayed. Now, the reason I found that very Red, resonant for me was that I'd been looking into the difference between the two brain hemispheres and it struck me that there was an analogy in that the right hemisphere which traditionally in neuroscience has been thought to be the inferior or non-dominant hemisphere actually sees more, understands more and is far more reliable than the left hemisphere uh, but the left hemisphere uh, acts rather like the emissary, it thinks it knows what it doesn't know and therefore excludes the vision and the knowledge and the wisdom that would have come from allowing the, uh, the master, the right hemisphere, to have its say. So that's how, the, that's how it works.